Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's the Buff Geek here, accompanied by... What up, guys? It's David here. And... Hashtag it's Steve. Nope. 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 Nope, he's gone. He no, had he's to go. not getting credit when he's not here. No credit. Screw you, Steve. Screw you, Steve. You fucking cock. Yeah. Just remember, Steve. Ten years. <laughs> In fact, nine years. Nine years, it's all gravy, brother. <laughs> he's actually put a countdown app on his phone for it. Yeah. It's, uh, thanks for helping me find that, by the way. <laughs> You're welcome. And we'll put sixteen years. Oh, I'll, I'll get I'll break up. <laughs> anyway, I'll it's, break you up. It's in jokes, folks. In jokes. In go fact, on. Go, go on. no, it wasn't in the last podcast, was it? It's not. Was it in the last podcast? Yeah, it was in the last podcast. Yeah, go listen to the last one. Find out what we're talking about. Yeah, you do. That's it's called a hook, people. It's called a hook. Okay, we've got a whole bunch of movie news, loads of movie news, and not much time. So I'm going to jump straight into a little piece of news about J.J. Abrams and Star Wars. Yes. So, the first one he did was very, very good. The second one, with Benedict Cumberbatch as Khan, was still very, very good, I thought. But I haven't seen Into Dark... The, is it Into Darkness, the third one? Uh-huh. Yeah, I haven't seen that one. So, <clears throat> so obviously, David is doing a nerd rage joke, um, because we're talking about Star Wars, not Star Trek. Mm-hmm. Um, Recently, there's been a fan petition started to fire J.J. Abrams from being the director of Star Wars Episode Nine. Now, being someone that doesn't really care much about Star Wars, mm-hmm. um, how do you feel about that? That's a bit shit on the guy. He's been picked for a reason. So, Well, he's generally made pretty decent films. He made The Force Awakens, which although it harkened back and relied a little bit too much on A New Hope, you could argue um, that George Lucas did say that each film from the prequels was meant to mirror in some way the tone of the originals, so you could argue that the sequels would do the same. Yep. And The Force, Force Awakens, Awakens is the best film of the lot. For God's sake. Uh, <laughs> you're really going to enjoy the next 12 <laughs> weeks of your life, aren't you? Oh, man. You're because we're, you. we're doing the DC films and we're doing the Star Wars films until the end of the year, and David's just going to fucking hate everything. Until and then we're doing X Men. I want to do Harry Potter. Wait, no, no, wait. I want to do the Harry Potter films. There we go. <laughs> well, we're doing Harry Potter after X Men. Right. Okay. Because we've got to get X Men out before all the other X Men stuff comes. And I'm going to hate everything about Harry Potter. Apparently, you are not. You will actually. You'll be like. You know what? This is a lot better than I was expecting. Great British cast. Great stories. You'll be surprised. Anyway. J.J. Abrams may have played it safe and may have... He didn't make the perfect Star Wars film. Force Awakens was pretty good, um, but it is too similar to A New Hope. It's pretty harsh to want to fire the guy. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's not fair, to be fair. How would you like it if someone started a petition to get you fired from this? You've started one, haven't you? Twice. And? <sighs> not enough Not enough to take it to Parliament. No? No. Not quite enough? <laughs> oh, well. I'm only about... 9,999 short of being able to take it to Parliament. So just you then? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to just tell one of the podcasts sometime soon? Would that make things easier? <laughs> As opposed to waiting on you know me dying or some terrible accident Falling before me. Window. Oh. oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's quite high in Alpha Towers. Right, anyway. Very high. So, yeah. I'm not... So you think that's total BS? Uh, so, uh, the yeah. fanboys being cocks. This guy has auditioned in a way. He's worked for this. He's been given the chance. Give him the chance. At the end of the day, there's been several Star Wars directors of the new era, mm-hmm. and Catherine Catherine Bigelow has had a problem with all of them. Is it Catherine Bigelow? Bam bam, yeah. Yeah, I think it's Kath. Is it Kathleen Kennedy? I'm getting. I have I'm no getting idea. Mixed up. Anyway, the, the the execs at Lucasfilm and Disney have had a problem with all of them. Um, because even not George Lucas, even J.J. Abrams to a certain extent, but he still managed to get the film out there without them changing directors or really then recutting he went, it. Fuck you and killed off Han Solo. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, okay, a little bit. So, well, actually, Han Solo killed himself, but that's another theory. That is another theory for another time. Uh, I kind of think that I would rather it wasn't J.J. Abrams. Right. Okay. I think there's some other good directors out there they could have chosen from, but. It's going to be reasonably safe in his hands at Could the end of the day. Bay. 
well, this is it. If it, it could have been Michael Bay. So this is what I'll put to you. J.J. J. J. Abrams the best scenario choice for this? Probably not, but it's not Michael Bay. Yes. So I think we're kind of winning <laughs> a little bit. And as, as usual, this will be a very quick movie news because we ran long in the last one and David needs to get home and sleep. So the next part of it, part of this episode, is to do with Marvel and uh, the Marvel Fox universe, shall we call it. Okay. So the head of twenty <laughs> the MFU MFU the head of twentieth twentieth century Fox has called the New Mutants film um, kind of like a haunted house film with hormonal teenagers, which just makes it sound fucking terrible. Yes, it, it's like it, it, I don't know. It's just that just goes to a certain demographic that isn't me. <laughs> right, okay. And they should be aiming for me, your bog standard geek who likes comics and comic book films. That turns me off. Haunted house with hormonal teenagers. I'm going to be living in one of them in 10 years' time, so. <laughs> well, that's a good point. That's a very good point. I'm trying to find the actual. Um, the actual quote because the quote doesn't sound as bad okay. as what is written there right. so just give me a sec to find that yeah so <clears throat> I got this thing here and it's the quote from the 20th, 20th century Fox executive that's kind of right. hard for me to say for some hmm. reason and there's a couple of films that she references like this film will be kind of like right, okay. <clears throat> The Breakfast Club I did hear this, actually. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Right. And The Shining. Okay, okay. And then there's the whole hormonal hormonal teenager vibe. So, I hear that and I kind of think, that sounds awfully... Dated. Choppy. Mm Mm-hmm. And they're aiming for cult favourites as well. Like The Breakfast Club. It's a surprisingly kind of simple film, but it's very, very good. It's, it's one I really like. I love it. And it's just like the whole coming of age thing and the realisation of who you are and all that sort of teenage stuff. Teenage angst. I love teenage angst. Yeah. And, that, and so it's a cult classic. And then you've got the, the One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and The Shining. Again, they are massive, massive films of their time. Yeah. So they're basically saying we're aiming for classic status. So my understanding is that you're going to get some horror elements, really strong horror elements like The Shining. Right. And that the setting Here's is... Here's Profix. Yes. The the setting is in a small, confined area. Right. Which is the part of the um, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Mm-hmm. Because it's very intense with diverse individuals. Yep. And they're going to keep it in... You know, obviously some sort of house for a while, you know, when mm. they're being teenagers and shit and everything's getting everyone's kinda getting pissed off with each other. And that kind of works as well with the Breakfast Club and the fact that it's gonna be a coming of age story to a certain extent of young young adults. Yes. So But she could have just said I don't think she needed to say three different films. No. I think she could have said the Breakfast Club with more of an action horror vibe to it. Yeah. And that would have been a bit more succinct. I think Fox should learn from DCEU's mistakes and go with the less is more approach and just be like, watch it and see. Rather than say, oh, if you're fans of this, you'll like this. I hate that shit. You think so? I went into Kingsman knowing nothing about Kingsman and I fucking loved it. Mm-hmm. Went into Kick-Ass and again, it's the same team, but I went into Kick-Ass knowing nothing about Kick-Ass and I fucking loved it. And it was just that Maybe they couldn't afford the market in the same way or whatever, but there was a lack of preset expectations as I was going into that film. You want people to compare you against One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, The Shining, and The Breakfast Club. You're setting yourself up for a massive, massive chance to fail. Absolutely. You know, and yeah, you might it might be an amazing film, it might exceed all of those expectations, but you're setting the bar high. I suppose you know? what they're trying to do is they're saying this is not your average superhero film. Like you got the Deadpool raunchy comedy stuff, you got the Western with Logan. This one is going to be different again. And I, I, I think maybe I can't remember. I was listening to a show earlier, and someone said, 
that maybe they saw the Spider-Man Homecoming um, press release and they said it was kind of like a John Hughes style vibe which may have given them the idea to make it a little bit more comedic and that that kind of mm-hmm. that kind of flavor. I don't know. I just I feel it like feels it's like a bad tr- move. I don't I don't like the statement. The mm-hmm. statement puts me off in and of itself. Mm-hmm. The new mutants, I assume that they're going to be angsty because they're teenagers and I, I mean I don't think I need the explanations that's given there. No. So I think it's not great and I just realized we didn't uh, aggregate our score for Man of Steel. That's okay. We'll do it next week. Anyway, what do you guys think? And guys means guys and girls. What do you guys think of the J.J. Abrams uh, petition? And what do you think of the statement put out by 20th Century Fox? Yes. Let us know. Now, there's something else that popped up yesterday and I got really, really excited about it. I'm not sure if you'll give two fucking shits about it, to be <laughs> honest. But apparently Linda Hamilton has signed on to join the cast of the new Terminator sequels, which will be produced by James Cameron and directed by Tim Miller. Now, allegedly, to give you some backstory on this, James Cameron has been attending meetings every single week. So it's not like the other Terminator films that have, that have came up, where it's been like, yeah, yeah, they're cool, because he's got a, a financial stake in this now. Right. You've also got Tim Miller, who's a man of 70, I don't think he's just coming in to take a paycheck film. Like, he didn't do Mad Max for how many years and then came back with Fury, Fury Road, which I've still never seen for no other reason than, like, it's never came up on Netflix. Excuse me, I missed, missed it at the cinema. Mm-hmm. So what, what? how do you feel about Linda Hamilton returning in The Terminator? Well, I think, like, for those of you who maybe can't think, Linda Hamilton plays Chuck's mum and Chuck, right? So now you know who she is. Um, Does she really? Yeah, she does actually. Oh, right, okay. I wasn't sure if you were making Because Chuck's a great TV show with loads of guest appearances and loads of like Cameras? references and stuff like that. Oh, right. And she plays his mum. And at one point, she actually says to him, Come with me if you want to live. Oh, brilliant. You, you know, there's loads of little things like that. You, you would actually like the show. Anyway, going back to this. I, I, I Terminator's starting to feel like. Um, Hellraiser. <laughs> a little bit. It's like. Somebody trying to get red rum to win a Grand National again, you know? It's had its moment, it done fucking brilliantly. They've tried and tried and tried and tried again. Well, they've had more misses than successes, because exactly. basically there's only really two good ones. Like, there's good elements in all of the films. The first two are brilliant. The first one, for the whole suspense, the, the singular kind of monster chasing down a person. Yeah. Kind of like Alien. One of the best horror films ever. Right. And then you've got Terminator 2, which is like Aliens, where it's all out action. Best action film ever. It's They're both great. They're probably like total dumps by now standards, but at the time... Do you know what? They're not. For, well... I don't think they are. No. I've watched them I've watched them fairly recently and they're fucking brilliant. I, um, so, I, I don't know. The fact they've got Hart and James Cameron involved, good sign, but... Also I'm, Arnie. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Arnie, so I sorry sort I of cut you off there. But I'm Arnie sorry. is going to play his age. So basically, the Terminator he is playing, the, it, is it, he playing Gramps or whatever he was called, Granddad? What was it? What was he called? In it? Was it Granddad? What are you talking about? Have you seen Genesis? Yeah, I've seen Jenny Smith. Terminator Genesis. Uh huh. Where he she calls him like Gramps or Granddad or something like that because he's aged in it. Maybe maybe she does, but. In this... no, what do you mean? Maybe she does. She does. Okay, she does. Then I don't remember this. Was it spoken by that really boring actress from Game of Thrones? Amelia Clark. Yeah. She's so hot. She's just average, totally average, and a little bit fat. <laughs> She's frumpy. This podcast is brought to you by Alpha Fitness, who spot things like that and help people get rid of it with nutrition plans and fitness plans. She's 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 she's, anyway. she's a chunky mo- chunky monkey. She's. Right. She's she's frumpy. She's I don't get why everyone's so crazy about her. See eyes. Moving on. Come on. Right. So, so he's playing his age. So basically, the Terminator that he is, the skin ages because mm-hmm. it's meant to be real skin. So he's going to be a seventy-year-old Terminator with all the problems that an old machine might have, which would be quite interesting. He'll need his own automail mechanic. <laughs> oh my! Oh my God! He will do actually. Yes. Oh, when Coca Coca. Um, and maybe, maybe they'll um. Oh, I just totally lost my train of thought there. 
He's a 70 year old with his own. Oh, problems. yes, and it's going to be. They're going to try and bring the film, allegedly, make it smaller, like it was at the start. That's maybe what they need. That's maybe a smart thing to do. M- imagine. Imagine if they had a 50 year old, probably ripped Linda Hamilton. I don't know how she looks now, but she's probably. She'll probably be in shape for that, right? With your 70 year old, like basically your Mega Drive, with some newer model chasing them and them trying to avoid it. In like fucking New Mexico or some shit, mm. and making it that kind of horror element. That was her and Chuck. Ah, that shit looks good, no? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as long as they don't do anything silly, like oh she's the Terminator this time, or or give away their plot twist in the posters, in the trailers, in the posters. Was it in the so, posters? Yeah, Terminator. Jenny Smith had the poster where it was. Oh, it's... This pumps my nads so much. I actually think this time it could be good because Cameron's actually doing something with it. Like he's not just going, he's not just getting a director's credit and collecting some some cash. Like there's John oh, Connor yeah. in the middle as a fucking Terminator. Oh yeah, that's totally weird. That's why would he you doesn't. Do that? But he doesn't look like John Connor, to me. No, but then John Connor to everyone is Edward Furlong. Yeah, but even you can't though, get you can't though, get him for it because he's a fucking madman. He's he's unreliable. Yeah. So. But yeah, who, who knows? Let's, I mean, you let's could. Hope the news of them scaling it back excites me more than the news of who's doing it. All right, okay. So that vibes with you. Yeah. Well, it, all of it makes me really, really happy. Really happy. Um, and I read something else about it's either Tim Miller or, oh, wow, that's ever for long. Yeah. Hey, if they... He's been eating for long times. If, if if they get him uh, get him on a decent diet, get a de- decent trainer in, and just like fucking monitor his ass twenty four seven, it could be the he could look like the that. comeback the comeback kid. Well, he does he doesn't look great, but can you imagine being John Connor and having all that stuff filling your head? He was like the nineties pin up nineties pin up fucking guy, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. But if if they get him a trainer, get some makeup on him, he's still got his own hair. It wouldn't take much to make him look okay, but his dishevelled look might lend to the credibility of the the crushing pain of potentially of being the saviour of mankind. Mm. You know, so maybe they even, maybe they could work with him. Possibly. But it'd be a ball ache to work with, I think. Yeah. Anyway, I'm excited about this news. I wonder what you folks think about that. We've got some other stuff dropping here, a whole bunch of stuff. I don't know if there's anything that pops out to you. I kind of feel like we go with this one. Go for it. So... Matthew Vaughn has been tipped to direct a the next Superman film. Okay. However, he's talking about it being um, more like the old school ones, so a little bit more positive, heroic, kind of like the. I don't. I, I, they didn't say this. I'm saying this. I the description I've read basically makes it sound kind of like he'll be like Captain America, you know. Mm-hmm. And it'll be much more positive, similar to Wonder Woman, although you've not seen Wonder Woman, basically the old school Superman. Well, it's funny because a lot of comparisons are made between Superman and Captain America. Mm. There's a great meme online where you see them two meeting and they're like, Captain, Superman, and then you see Batman and Tony Stark meeting and they're like, Stark, bats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no respect, yeah. fucking hate each other. Um, but, yeah, I mean... Going for a Superman film and describing it as heroic and feel good, yeah, that's that's kind of expected with a Superman film. Even Man of Steel was a bit heroic. I I, I felt. Well, did you see something there? No. Okay, it's fine. What the fuck did you see? Like a ghost? I don't know what I saw. Right. Okay. Doesn't matter. Like so, it was almost heroic, and I felt good when the end credits came up. You know, so. Well, this made me wonder. This made me wonder if they're talking about another Superman film. The same way we're talking about, we've talked about a different Joker film. Mm, I think they'd be stupid to deviate from Henry Cavill at the moment. You think so? Yeah. They've got a good thing going with him. With Jared Leto as the Joker, for example, they've got, with the Joker in general, you've got so many avenues you can explore. Superman... There's not much to really explore. Even if you were to do a completely fucking like Red Sun, you know, where he, he lands twelve hours later, 
So he lands in Russia. Uh-huh. Um, He's just Russian. You could, yeah, <laughs> that, that's the only difference. It's not like he has to look different or act different. Well, he acts a bit different, but he's still generally... He can't quite, really change up his look too much. Like the, the Jared Leto, some people like it, some people don't like it. Whatever, it looks different we're used to, to every other Joker. We're used to a lot of different looking Jokers. To recast Superman is doing it for the sake of doing it. Because you've got someone who's worked hard for it, they've built themselves up for it. You know, and although I'd I'd sh- I'd shave and cut my hair for it, I'm about the same dimensions as uh, as Soup's currently. Right. So you know, there if, you go. Matthew Vaughn, if you want someone to, if you want to make a no name into a star, I'll do it. Yeah, I can be heroic. Well, he done it with a cast of kick ass. <laughs> there we go. Give me a chance, Matthew Vaughn. And so, as you'll have heard earlier in this podcast, I am a fan of Matthew Vaughn's work. You are. Yeah. I'm. That's who I wanted to take over Deadpool when. Tim Miller walked off. Remember? Oh yeah, yeah, you did say that. Mm-hmm. Um, I have seen almost all of Kickass. Almost all fucking hell. And I don't like Kingsman. Oh, I'm not getting a job. Um, no, at least you're honest. He's honest with you, Matt. You'll keep it right. Yeah, I just, I just didn't like the style of it. I see, I do. But then there was just really great fucking acting scenes. I think what for me, I almost wanted it to be more serious mm. but the, the the thing that really put me off was the girl right, with okay. the feet and then the the, the blades on them oh right okay the, the female that Oscar Pistorius of... hmm? she was like a female Oscar Pistorius with the yeah 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 but they were blades on the actual blades yeah yeah she just like I just thought that looked silly I didn't, I didn't and there was a lot of like CGI fighting that just I... Anyway, I'm not going to rag in the film. I didn't like the film that much. Mm-hmm. Okay, I would I would never watch it again. And when you suggested we watch it before the new one comes out, I flat out refused. Yes, you did. I did, um, which was really nice of me and inclusive. <laughs> <laughs> Hate that word. Yes. Um, so, if if it's going to be a more positive version of Superman, I suppose I would say that, and it's the Henry Cavill Superman. I would say I need to see Justice League first. Mm-hmm. And if it's not, and it's a new other Superman, I would say, give me a job. <laughs> I love how in Justice League they've just stopped <laughs> pretending that Superman's still dead. You know, like, because he dies in BBS and they're oh, like, yeah, yeah. you all know he's going to come back, so we're just going to put him in the promo posters now. Is he actually in the poster now? Yeah, he's in posters for it. Oh, fuck's sake, that's unbelievable. Well, they see the red cape, don't they? And it's meant to be a bit of a surprise, but... I don't really know if it is much of a surprise. Nice. Nah, um, while you uh, have a look at your phone there, I yep. was going to mention that um, the Tomb Raider trailer dropped. I've not watched it yet, but I have seen the posters for it. You watched the trailer. You've played the game. so I haven't watched the trailer. Have you not? No. Do you want to show me the trailer? Should we watch the trailer? Quickly, yeah. We'll watch the trailer quickly. We're going to watch the trailer quickly. Okay, David. What did you think of that trailer for Tomb Raider? I thought it looked quite interesting. There was a bit too much off the island stuff going on there. Like shops and houses and things like that. Whereas the original reboot game 2011, I think it was, very much started off on the boat. And then you were on the island after the storm and then just all kicked off from there. And it's really, really good story. Really good game. I actually keep meaning to go back and play it. Uh, so basically, it, it, it's they've taken that game and made it Yes, life, and right. they fleshed it out okay. into a story which could make it good, could make it bad. Plus, I kind of got excited when I seen Walton Goggins in there as well. And what does that mean? He's a very, very good actor, and if he's meant to be a baddie... What's Walton, what is, what's Walton Goggins? I mean, I recognise the guy from stuff, but... Uh, Predators. A lot of Kurt Sutter stuff as well. So Sons of Anarchy, S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, stuff I've not watched. Yeah. Yeah. But I know, he's easy to... He's a, he's just really really good. Hmm. And, and Alicia Vikander. I've not seen her in anything that I know of. You've not seen Ex Machina. No. Oh, you Ian, should. I've got it. Ian bought me it. I've just never actually watched it. Yes, you. I know. I know. Yes. Yeah. Like you know, people say like you should watch this movie. Yeah. You really should watch this one. Yeah. It's actually really good. Um. Okay. For me, I would say there's two people from tra- from Star Wars and uh, Ex Machina as well, which is pretty pretty cool. Yeah, and they they play really different roles, and it shows their their range. Anyway, um, I watched the trailer and I asked David um, how long it was because it felt like it took about ten minutes. Mm. For me, 
Um, I will not see this film. Right. Um. Yeah, I, like you, you. Even if you, if even if we were to go to the Meerkat movies and you were to say like you just come and uh, and you can watch it for free, <clears throat> I probably won't because. I don't care about Tomb Raider. Mm-hmm. I don't think the trailer looks very exciting. Right. Um, I think Alicia Ka- Vikander looks really weird in it. She looks really small. Really, like her face, like she looks like. Remember, it was really fashionable for for girls to be like <clears throat> emaciated almost. Mm. You know, they were super hyper skinny like ten yeah. years ago. Um, like she looks, she doesn't look well to me. Yeah, because Lara Croft is not stick inside. She's not like. Uh, it's hard to describe. But... Well, she's not built or anything. No. But at least for kind of her face doesn't look. She looks really slight. I think L- looks a bit feeble. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, like there's some actors that pop in there, but I'm quite happy that I've watched them in other films, and I know I'll see them in other ones still. Mm-hmm. Like there's nothing that sells me on it. Um, I, don't I have... think the I think the computer game, um, fraternity might turn out for this one. Oh, but they don't really turn it for. I asked. I've asked a f- couple of friends of mine who are big gamers, and I'm like, "So you're gonna go watch like World of Warcraft or whatever?" And they're like, "No, nah. like, yeah. wh- why not? Because I play games. Mm-hmm. I don't watch movies. I play games." Do you and know I'm how like, many oh. films that are based on games at the moment? Like in total of all time, how many? Thirty six. That's it. Yeah. <clears throat> so gamers don't turn up for them. Stu told me that. Oh, nice he, one, Stu. He's done some analysis on. Games that have been made into movies. It's I'm on Stu Stats on the Buff Geek Podcast blog at WordPress.com. Lovely. Where's that at? The Buff Geek Podcast blog at WordPress.com. Are you deaf? I am a little bit. Um, interestingly enough, Alicia Vikander, <laughs> uh, I think, goes out with Michael Fassbender in real life. And he also played a very beloved character that was in a computer game. Assassin's he was, yes. And no one went to see that. No. Nope. Um, I like Assassin's Creed. I had no interest in going and seeing it because the story I like from Assassin's Creed, I seen in Assassin's Creed. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and I looked at it and thought this looks kind of not good. I learned my lesson from the Resident Evil franchise. Shit films, right? Yeah. The, the best... CGI ones are great though, but you all know that because I say it on most podcasts. The best computer game film that has ever existed is still and will always Doom. be no wrong Mortal Kombat. Fuck it. Doom. One with the rock. <laughs> no, it's a pure so shite film. Bad. Is that not? Is Carl Urban the main yes, guy in that? He's, he's, uh... Maybe it would be better now that he that I know he's dread because at the time I was like, "Who the fuck's Carl Urban?" Mm. You know, he's the why guy is the rock? Ro- well, it was it was marketed as Rock was going to be the main guy, mm-hmm. but he wasn't. He was he became the main villain, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it wasn't awful, but I don't know what it is about computer game films that. They but just don't but take... Mortal, Kombat, Mortal Kombat actually did work. The thing with... I don't remember it, but the thing with computer game films is computer game <coughs> stories are told maybe over 10, 20... In case of Final Fantasy games, you could be 50 hours of story, you know? And someone's trying to compress it into an hour and a half to two and a half hours. Yeah, but you, you can do that, because how much of that is gameplay just bullshit? Like, if we just watched all the FMVs for when I played Resident Evil 4 recently, and it took us... Something like a full day's worth of playing, Mm -hmm. for example, like 24 hours of playing or something stupid. It was probably only a couple hours of FMVs or less. Okay, maybe for that. For bigger games, like bigger story RPG games. Yeah. Hours. Because there's a lot of it is text as well. That's how they get, you know, so that there's more depth to the story than they could do. See, I'm not a modern gamer because they take too long and they require me to go online and play with a fucking yeah. team. And World just, of it, Warcraft, you can it lose all takes too much for, time. Lose yourself for months in World of Warcraft, and yet they're trying to put it into a two-hour film. I had a friend sell his account mm-hmm. years ago. I know you weren't really meant to do it because he was selling it for big money, mm-hmm. and at the time it was before I bought this place, so I fronted him some money because he, he was selling because he needed money mm-hmm. so I gave him the money and then he sold the account and made a fucking shit ton mm-hmm. and I was like how many hours did you put into this and he was basically like three years or something mm-hmm. like it's, what it's mental people and he wasn't even the best mm-hmm. I'm like you you put three years into this and you're not the best <laughs> like, what the fuck is that and he's like oh look at all this shit and I'm like what mm-hmm. 
I just, I, I just didn't get it, man. That's crazy. Didn't get it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not ragging on anyone that does it. I just, I, I couldn't like, well, I, I could, I've just never been able to get into modern games that way, you know. Nah. But I'm not going to see this Tomb Raider film. But maybe, like, for you, d- d- I'm not going to go and see it. All oh, right, so you, you're like, oh yeah, it's cool. It's just like the game. I'm not going to see it. Probably not. No. <laughs> That's hilarious. That is I, I, fucking hilarious. Oh, I was like, I want to go see <coughs> it, and I've still never managed to go see that. I know what I'm like when it comes to films. I, I usually end up getting them on DVD. Oh yeah, yeah, or or watch them on Netflix or some mm-hmm. shit. Going to the cinema is a, a bit of an inconvenience. I know it. That sounds it's a shame. But that sounds it's... very first world problems. But sometimes it's just hard to get out of the house. I just never have the time. It's either go to the cinema or come and podcast. And I'd rather go to the cinema, but I've committed to the podcast, so... Oh, thanks, buddy. Welcome. There is a, another trailer that mm-hmm. I've not watched. I don't know if you want to watch it. No, you don't want to watch it. Cool, so we're, we're wrapping up now. <laughs> Sorry, folks, we are wrapping up because um, David says it is time. Yep. And I went, got to go long in the other podcast, so <laughs> now that's done. We would really like to hear your thoughts and opinions. I'm sorry that um, we can't do longer because David's got a small bladder and got to get up really early. But we'd like to hear your opinion on whether there should be a petition to fire J.J. Abrams. Who would you choose instead? Or are you a big fan of his? Let us know. Are you excited for Linda Hamilton returning to the Terminator franchise after something like, what was it, 25 years? 25 years with Arnie playing his age, with James Cameron and Tim Miller. Does this pump your nads? Let us know. There's also the 20th Century Fox news that New Mutants will be like 17 different films. Does that worry you? Like they've not got a clear vision? I see when you said that there, I thought you meant they've got like 17 films slated for oh, right. that series. I'm like, fucking hell. <laughs> Maybe that did sound... No, that's DC. Yeah, yeah, that's DC. When Matthew Vaughn says that he's going to make a more idealistic, heroic, feel-good, kind of happy-go-lucky Superman film, do you think that means that they're going to recast and this is going to be part of the a separate Joker? Or do you it think that that it's just going to be a kind of a tonal shift as they've slowly been doing with the DCEU? Are you excited about the Tomb Raider film? Do you care? Are you a, are you a gamer who goes to see game films? That'd be interesting. What's your favourite gaming film? Am I right that it's Mortal Kombat? Maybe it's Street Fighter. Maybe it's... Doom? <laughs> it just you reminded me of Street Fighter there. Street Fighter animated movie. Have you seen that? Fucking epic! That's the best one. There we go. That is the be- best live action. Oh, live action. Is Mortal okay. Kombat. Best animated one is the Street Fighter the movie. Oh, it's and so it finishes good. and you're like, where's the rest of it? I know. Oh, and just real quick for the hot... For the ha- Wow. The head, the head, the, 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 hall- the, the Halloween, the horror fans out there. Jamie Lee Curtis is set to return to the Halloween sequel reboot. Anything Linda can do, I can do better. Well, two things. Um, the Terminator franchise is ignoring all films apart from the first two. Oh, are they? Yes. All right, okay. Which makes things really easy. Mm-hmm. And I think most fans will just go with that, right? It's kind of <laughs> they like, actually will. They're doing like an alternate universe. In, yeah, right. And they're doing the same for the Halloween ones. They're only going to count like the first two or three right. and then disregard everything else. So the fact that Jamie Lee Curtis is returning to it, does that does that pump your nads for Halloween? Are you into that at all? Nah. The horror films don't do it for me at all. Right. I'll, I'll probably watch the first Halloween again and I'll watch the ones that they're including as part of this. I can't remember. I think it's the first two. Right. Just the first two. I like a good a good horror film on occasion, but I'll never. I don't know. I never. Uh, I never usually make it to the cinema I to see them. I would pick a shitty action film over a horror film. Would you? Yeah, over a classic top notch horror film, I would pick like that Stone Cold Steve Austin one we were looking at. What? I actually want to watch that Tactical Force. Do you? Yeah. yeah okay. Are you trying to say that it's a shitty action film? No, I get what I, you mean. I've never heard of it. I'd rather watch a straight to DVD, like. Take uh, on an action film than like with Stone Cold Steve Austin and Batista from two thousand seven. Yeah, like there's a film here, He Who Dares, Downing Street Siege. I would consider that before a horror. Really? Yes. Wow. Well, looks like me and Ian will need to figure something out for the horror stuff. Yes, you will. At a later date, because we're finished on the podcast here. <laughs> want to thank the sponsors, Alpha Fitness, for sponsoring each and every one of the podcasts. If you need personal training, nutrition plans, training programs, or just want to follow for general tips and motivation, 
Check out Alpha Fitness at all social media or at the Buff Geek Podcast blog dot wordpress dot com. You go. Um, or at the Alpha Fitness website when David fixes that problem I've got, with it, <laughs> which is happening in two thousand eighteen, right? Uh, could be. Could yes. be. Yeah. Could be. <laughs> um, do you want to do your sign off? Thanks for listening, guys. You'll find us at the website he's mentioned, and you'll get me at D Stoby and most social media. Over to you, big man. There we go. No, sorry. <clears throat> um, what he said, you'll find us everywhere at the Buff Geek on all social media. Hashtag the Buff Geek Podcast. Ow, 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 ow,